Good morning, everyone. It is Holy Saturday, so Lent is over. So I'm going to make um, a video, and this time it's about the garden. Um, let's see, over here I have my uh, native white turtle heads coming up. And then over there I have my Lenten roses, those are not native. Um, and they, you know, bloomed the way they should during Lent. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. I love them. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Look, you can see all the pock marks left by the squirrels. The squirrels have been crazy this year. They just love this mulch. We had a garden company come in and just mulch everything a couple of months ago. And, uh, man, the squirrels have been having a great time digging through. Uh, let's see. This is my tick seed. Uh, which is a terrible name, and I can't remember the nicer name, but that'll have beautiful flowers on it. That's a native plant. And here, look at this. We've got a tennis ball and a kid's watering can. <laughs> um, these are my rugosas, and they're going to have, you can see some of the leftover um, rose hips that I never, <laughs> that I never managed to harvest. I'm determined this year I'm going to do it. These are the I don't know, the birds probably feasted on them. They probably did some good. So, yeah, so that's that. So let's go through the part. I'm so untidy. I'm really ashamed of myself. You can see how my little untidy area. Um, and then look, the red bud is starting. I do not think this is a native, although red buds are native to this area, but I think that's a cultivar. Um, so some things are just starting to leaf out, as you can see, um, yeah, things are just, but look, look at the, uh, apple trees, look at this apple tree, looking pretty good, this tiny little thing, it's been fighting for its life for a few years now, it's finally coming out, well, my daffodils, you can still see some of them, but, um, yeah, they're kind of past their prime. But they were beautiful. I love daffodils. This is another apple tree. No things here. And you can see my choreo, uh, not choreo, what is that called? Comfrey. My comfrey is coming back. It was completely dead looking. This is yarrow coming back right there. And then this is another apple tree. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And then we still got some daffodils going on here. So last year I fought bunnies, and uh, this year they 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 can't come into my yard. I mean I saw one, and then I put some um, scare tape. I haven't seen any, but apparently they're living somewhere back there, because my daughter and the six-year-old saw some. So they might be coming into this garden. And then this is a, a plum tree, and another plum tree. Oh, what the heck? I don't know what that is. I do not know what that is. I did not. I swear they just bloomed. Oh, here's my cat. Hello, Clover. Clover is going to become an indoor cat because there's just too many reasons. I'm, I, I just feel like so terrible that he, he gets birds. This, you know, these just bloomed. I was just out here yesterday and they, these flowers, I didn't notice these flowers. Look at that. I forget what these are. Darn it. I got a label of here because I have the world's worst memory. But they're some kind of native plant. So the bees will be very happy. Uh, let's see. Over here, these are pawpaw. And can you believe that? Can you see that? They look almost dead, but there's buds on them. There's buds on them. So those are pawpaws. These are uh, New York ferns which are a native fern. It, it's very shady in this area. So, oops, there's our lady of Guadalupe. She got moved from out here. I had a papa got blown off. <laughs> uh, yeah, here's more, more new. Aren't they beautiful? These are really beautiful. I really like them. And then there's, that's a weed. So let's see, let's go in here, Clover. So we have some kind of bees. Look at this horrible wood pile. Some kind of bees are nesting there, and we don't know if they're native or if they're wasps. Look, there. 
Can you see? Wait. Can I make this go? No. They're neat. They're bees. So I'm gonna, because I have children, and we walk by this area all the time. See, it's right by the gate. I'm a little nervous. I think I'm gonna call the pest people and just have them come out and examine whether or not we should be worried, <laughs> and then maybe try to do something non-toxic, like a diatomaceous earth or something like that. See, I put this scare. Uh, these, what do they call them, scare tape, and I think that's keeping the bunnies out. They were able to go underneath, even though I put this here, they were sliding underneath. So I think that that scare tape is enough, and I'm also hoping no foxes can slip under there either, because we saw, you want to see the Come on. We saw, I thought it was a coyote because I thought it was too big to be a fox, but the six-year-old swore up and down it was a fox. <laughs> anyway, we saw him behind the fence and he was there for quite a while. And of course, right here are my chickens, my two remaining chickens. So, I don't know. I'm hoping that we're keeping the predators out. I love wildlife and, you know, I want everybody to prosper, but um, look at all these weeds I got up. Um, but on the other hand, I want my garden and I want my chickens, so there you go. So this hideous thing, it looks so nice in the garden, <laughs> and I just think it looks so weird. But anyway, I'm trying to move to raised beds because I just, my back is bad. So we're going to put, this is bigger than I thought too, but I'm going to put plant um, sweet potatoes and maybe a couple of regular potatoes. Then I do think maybe I'm going to... Um, use the um, the uh, grow bags for potatoes again and try again. Here I've got to cut these back because I want to grow mint and a couple other herbs here. And I have to take care of these. I haven't done that yet. And I also added this um, this trussel and this is my blackberry, my thornless blackberry. So I need to train that up there. And let's see, here's the cherry trees. This one is the latest blooming one. And look, I think we might get cherries off it this year. And then this is the one that's been the most prolific. And I think we saved it from the, uh, the killing freeze. We had a killing freeze for like three days. It went down into the 20s. And we froze everything. We, my husband bought um, one of these... Um, Oh, what's the word? You know, it, uh, the, it sprays the, the hose, the water everywhere, and it froze everything. And you, it's called a wall of water, and it supposedly protects fruit trees from deep freeze somehow. By freezing them, you protect them. It's the weirdest concept. But anyway, here's my other cherry tree. Now, these cherry trees have been a little bit diseased with something. I don't know. But um, let me look and see. I've been spraying them with neem oil. They're looking, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. The worst ones are the peach, and I've sort of been focusing on mostly spraying them. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm filming. I'm sorry, this, this may make no sense at all. And I also got out my, uh, my green stalk. I haven't filled it yet. But, and I got a new watering thing, which doesn't matter, but I needed this watering reservoir right here and right here. So that, this doesn't go here. Um, that fits down below. But anyway, I still have to fill them up. Fill them up with, you know, potting soil and then plant things. I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, let's see. This is my sour cherry. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I love it. Look at this. Look at my siding. Oh my gosh. Last year I meant to get it cleaned. I could not find somebody. I, I We had a guy before that I really liked and he went out of business or something. So I can't find anyone. I tried to hire somebody and they had no idea what hardy plank was. They didn't know how to do it. So I need to find somebody this year. It's, it's really bad. Uh, let's see. So here, along with the weeds, I have spinach and other things growing. They're growing very, very slowly. And as you can see, even though I have this fencing here, the squirrels are still getting in there and digging. It's not quite, I need smaller 
you know, the squares are too big. It keeps my cat out, which was the point, but the squirrels are crazy. They're really going crazy. So anyway, so I direct sowed spinach and lettuces in here and they're growing extremely slowly. And I direct sowed scallions and nothing. I'm seeing nothing. And I direct sowed bunching onions. Can you see that? Nothing, nothing's coming up. I don't know, this was, I, I did this before the deep freeze. So I don't know if I should wait longer or what. Then celery, and I did not see anything coming up. I do believe this is just a weed. And these are all just weeds. So I'm not seeing, and then carrots. Now, the carrots might be coming up. I'm not sure, they're slow. Carrots are slow anyway. Um, yeah, so that's not too, encouraging right there. And let's go over here. I grew from seed broccoli. And so that's a broccoli right there. That's a Chico. And that's like your standard broccoli that you get at the grocery store. This one doesn't look too good. Um, yeah. So those are my broccolis that I planted. And over here I planted all the stuff and nothing. I mean, it is so slow. Here we go. Here's something. Whoops, I'm going to trip. Okay. Here we go. These are parsnips and radishes, which are supposed to come up really quickly. Can you see them? So the parsnips, I guess, are growing slowly, and the radishes are coming up. I don't know. I don't know. Everything I direct sow, I always feel like direct sowing is such a crapshoot, you know? You have no idea. This is supposed to be sprouting broccoli. Can you see that? Nothing came out. I think the squirrels really dug here, although you don't see it right now because I've been working the soil. Anyway, um, maybe I should have done something differently there or just the deep freeze really slowed things down. I don't know, they're all cool weather crops, but maybe it affects them more. See, look at that. Look at how the, much the squirrels just dig, dig, dig. Uh, anyway. Let me see if this is okay over here. I'm really excited about this broccoli. This is a mini hybrid that I got from the local seed savers, the permaculture gardens, and they live just about 20 minutes from me. And they're, they're really great. And I got these seeds from them. So I'm excited about this mini, uh, mini hybrid. Of course, this is my garlic. Um, let's see. That might, let's check out the peach. Oh, I forgot to show you the uh, blueberries. The blueberries are starting to flower too. Look, these are coming out too, the aroni berries. Oh, these are Virginia Sweet Spire. They haven't started doing anything yet. Let's see if I can get over here. Here's my strawberry patch. And I do see a little bit, but look, it's mostly weeds. It's been taken over by this. It's not even proper, um, Violets. See, it looks kind of like violets. I think it's creeping Charlie, which I think is invasive. So it's just the the um, the strawberries just weren't didn't take up enough room. Didn't crowd out. What I'm saying is it didn't crowd out the other weeds. You know, ground cover should be so aggressive that it it uh, crowds out the other weeds. That's the why you want it, right? Look, there's a bloom. So we're gonna get some strawberries, but pretty soon this is gonna be gone. After strawberry season, we are mowing it down and we're gonna put up raised beds. And I'm gonna start growing strawberries in raised beds. And here are my peach trees. And let's look at how badly damaged. See, look at that. There's, at least it doesn't have all that honeydew. Oh my gosh, it was oozing all this honeydew, which is not sap from the tree. It's it's left by the uh, the larva. So I don't know about these peach trees. I'm gonna try and do right by them this year, though. They need to be pruned properly and everything. I'm, I don't know. I have to work on them. I really do. And even my chestnut way at the bottom there. This tree seems dead right here. But maybe maybe it's I don't know. I don't know about that one. Oh, that one's, these are persimmons. See, this one's, this one's starting. See, that's a persimmon. 
But that's a chestnut down there. And uh, <laughs> it looks so dead. My husband's like, is that, what is that? <laughs> Um, so maybe, maybe one day we'll get chestnuts. So yeah, it was right here behind that fence that we saw the fox or a coyote. I don't know what it was. It looked too big to be a fox to me. But um, anyway, I don't know if you can even hear me. Look at that creeping Charlie. Oh, I got so many weeds. <laughs> I wonder what these are. Hmm. Doesn't that look like, what is that? Hmm, I'm going to look that one up. That looks new to me. Uh, but look at all this is mugwort. Uh, which, uh, you know, is uninvited. And then what I need to do is we cut down all these roses that we have. We have these huge roses. But I need to plant something here. Uh, I need to plant something along here because look, the, the weeds are taking over. So i got to put something in there. And then... I'm really excited about this idea. See this area right here? Well, these are Saint, these bushes that have nothing on them. They're St. John's Wort. They're a type of St. John's Wort. They're big and beautiful yellow flowers. They're gorgeous. But they're kind of too much for the space. And behind them, I would not trip. Uh, let's see if I can get through here. Oh, without falling. That would be good. Um, whew, that's hard. <laughs> Um, um, see, these are pineapple guavas. They were an experiment. I was excited to have something exotic. This is the hottest part of the garden because it gets a lot of the um, afternoon sun. Like from noon until the sun sets, it, it's, it's really hot here. So we thought it would be a good microclimate to grow pineapple guavas. They've never produced fruit. They've been here five years. So I'm ready to get rid of them. And what I want to do, see more, more pop marks by, by squirrels. What I want to do is I want to turn that window that goes to my dining room into a door. And I want to build a greenhouse here, right here in this area. I think that would be so cool. I could grow stuff all winter. I don't really have a good place to put a greenhouse out in the rest of the yard. <coughs> So that's what I want to do. Um, and then I better hurry up and finish this up. I'm having trouble uploading things to YouTube lately. It just, it takes forever to try to get something uploaded. I don't know what it is. Anyway, in here, we have more Creeping Charlie and Japanese Stillgrass back there. It's supposed to be oregano. Um, this is more St. John's Wort. And then this was thyme, and this is a pomegranate tree, and um, we had rosemary and sage also growing. That might be sage coming back. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but this was like my herb garden, um, and I need to. Boy, their air conditioning went on. It's not. It's chilly out. You don't need air conditioning. Um, anyway. So this is my, now I'm back to where I was before, where, where I started, my front porch. And I'm not going to bother to walk down the driveway and look at my uh, native garden, which is out in the front, which doesn't look very good, frankly. <laughs> Some things are coming back, though. The purple cone flowers are, are coming back. Other things, these are my elderberries. Now, this is European elderberry, and I kind of regret that. I wish I was growing American elderberry. Uh, I've never, this is, I've never gotten berries off of these trees. The birds eat them right away. I can't, I can't look for reason for these things. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Here's my cat enjoying his freedom. But in the next couple of weeks, we're going to turn him into an outdoor, I mean an indoor cat. Because, uh, oh, I feel sorry for him because he's, he's a wild one, but he's a hunter. And he's a very good hunter. And he just kills too many birds. So, sorry. Sorry, Clover. I'm so sorry. Alright, well that's it from me. I will talk to you soon. Happy Easter if you celebrate. Happy Passover if you celebrate that. And um, happy reading. Bye.